You're coming too, Phil. I called the DA. He's waiting for us. On the way over, you and I can have a little talk. You know, Phil, the DA is going to like this very much. Yeah, I know. Cronyager will be there too. That won't help. Maybe I can needle him enough to take some of the heat off you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Evening, Mr. Wild. Hi, Amaro. Hi, Cronyager. You know Phil Marlowe? Yeah, I know. Sit down unless you'd rather be on your feet. Thanks. You'd better start, Bernie. Well, I guess the best way to begin is to ask Captain Cronyager what he's got in the Randall place killing. Brody, I think, was the name. We got Brody with two slugs in him. Two guns that hadn't been fired. Down the street, a dame found a start of car that didn't belong to her. Hers was right next to it, the same model. She acted rattled. The boys brought her in and she talked. She was there when it happened, claimed she didn't see the killer. That's all you got, huh? All that only happened an hour ago. Yeah, I know. What do you expect, the motion picture of the killing? Not from you. You talk. That'll do. Go ahead, Bernie. Well, your killer's down below, handcuffed. Here's the gun he used. Marlowe got him for you. How did you manage? Oh, yeah, there are a couple more deaths involved. What? One of them in your territory. Maybe you know about it. Marlowe uncovered them, too. Keep going. You heard about the car was lifted out of the Pacific Ocean last night with a dead guy in it. What about it? The dead guy was chauffeur to a rich family that was being blackmailed on account of one of the daughters. Mr. Wilde recommended Marlowe to the family through me. Marlowe's been playing them kind of close to the vest, that's why. I love private dicks that play him close to the vest. And you, olds, you don't have to be so coy about it. I don't have to be coy. It isn't often I get a chance to be coy with you. I spend half my time digging up stuff your men don't my see. My men don't need that. That's me. enough of that. Sit down, Captain. And you, Bernie, go on with it. Well, this chauffeur I was talking about killed a guy last night. A guy named Geiger. He ran a racket back of a bookstore on Hollywood Boulevard, in your territory. But you hadn't heard about Geiger, had you? Or the racket. You're on the air, Marlowe. Tell it to him. Well, well I um, hadn't heard it. Were you going to say something? Go ahead. You better get this down, Eddie. Well, yesterday afternoon, General Sternwood showed me a letter. Brody stalled around for a while, but when the girl Agnes didn't back him up, he began to get cold feet. I kept after him, and while I was trying to persuade Brody to talk, the doorbell rang. He opened it, and somebody shot him, and then... Well, you know the rest. And outside of Taylor, Ludgren, and Brody, no one else knew about the Gaggy killing. His secretary, she got it from Brody. I told you that. And no one else came near the house? That's right. So all you failed to do was to report a murder that happened last night. You fooled around all day so the kid could commit his second killing this evening. That's all. I was in a tough spot. I was probably wrong, but I wanted to protect my client. I had no reason to think the boy would go gunning for Brody. Just worked out that way. That kind of thinking is police business. You're still in a tough spot. Have you told your story complete? Well, I left out a few personal details, Mr. Wilde, and I intend to keep on leaving them out. Why? My client's entitled to that protection. You think? I got another idea. You could lose your license, Marlowe. Captain, your division's got two murders on its hands, both solved, and you've got both killers. I don't see what you've got to gain by starting trouble. Besides, there are some other people in this, and what you bring out about them wouldn't do any good. If Marlowe wants to forget it, it's all right with me if your office takes all the credit. I hate to let this guy get away with it. Besides, it won't do you any good by watching this over in the papers. What do you want? I've got a prisoner I want to turn over you. Come on. So long, Wild. All right, Eddie, you can go. Just a minute. Leave that notebook here. You'll have to make another statement for our files, Marlow. Do you think it's possible to keep the two killings separate and keep General Sternwood's name out of it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You know why I'm doing this instead of tearing your ear off? I expected to lose both of them. You should have. What are you getting for all this? $25 a day in expenses. That's $50 in a little gasoline so far. About that. And for that money, you're perfectly willing to get in touch with the law enforcement of this county and lose your license. Well, I don't like it, but what can I do? I'm on a case. Just what the General Stern would really want you for. To settle this business with Geiger. Are you sure he didn't have anything to do with that ex-bootlegger Regan, whom he took up with about a year ago? What makes you say that? Oh, I had an idea. Maybe he thought Regan was mixed up in this some way. And what he really wanted you to find out was that Regan isn't. 
Sean's no blackmailer. I know him. Well, you better find him and make sure. Maybe I had. And you ought to buy Bernie a box of cigars. <laughs> I'll do that. He's earned it. You know, someday Kreinig is going to blow up and bust. So long, Mr. Wild. So long. Thanks, Barney. Forget it. Carnegie's always been my pigeon. <laughs> what happens now? Yeah, it looks like I'll get paid off. That'll end it, huh? I don't know, Barney. This began as a simple case of blackmail, and all at once things started to happen for no reason. No reason at all. Now, just when it looks like it's over... You think there's more to it? Well, so do you. What's your dope on Regan's disappearance? The Bureau of Missing Persons has all we've got. It boils down to one thing. Eddie Moore's blonde wife disappeared the same time Regan did. Hmm. Moore's ever asked you to find her? No. Could be people would like us to think they ran off together. Is that just a hunch? Almost. Why don't you play it? That's what the DA said. I think I will. Well. Good morning. How are you today? Better than last night. Huh. Come on in. The telephone didn't answer at your apartment. I was just plugged. I wanted to get some sleep. I was tired. I was worried and wanted to know what happened after I left last night. Worried or curious? Both. And I read the morning papers. Yeah, we were lucky. We managed to keep the stern ones out of it. Yes, my father and I were both very pleased. He hopes you didn't involve yourself too deeply. Tell him you were there, that you were mixed up in it? No, I didn't see what there was to be gained by telling him. Oh, I guess you're probably right. Anything special you wanted to see me about? Yes. Dad asked me to give you a check. He considers the case closed. Oh? It is, isn't it? Well, as regards Geiger, yes. Then it's completely closed. I hope this is satisfactory. Five hundred. Well, it's a lot more than I expected, but welcome just the same. Here you are. Here's the three promissory notes and Geiger's card. They're in there. As for the rest of the photographs, I'll destroy them myself, if you don't mind. We appreciate what you've done, Mr. Marlowe. Someday, my father would like to thank you himself. Fine. I'll come up and drink some more of his brandy. Maybe talk some more about Sean Regan. My brandy's just as good. Maybe sometime, if you can stop being a detective long enough, you might have a drink with me. I'd like to. I like brandy. I have lots of it. Completely closed. Distance. This is Philip Marlowe at Main 9, 1494. Hello. I have Mr. Mars for you. Oh, thanks. Put him on. Hello, Mr. Mars? Yeah. Oh, hello, Eddie. This is Phil Marlowe. I called you up because I want to see you. Sure, when? I can drive up tonight. 